so I thought I'd pick up for Sergeant Session a very serious topic, which is craft beer, particularly as a bunch of us are going to uh, the occasional brewer to make our own. I thought it was important that all the club understand the phenomenon that we are seeking to create. So um, let's get into some craft beer. Now the, the, the trigger for this was, um, I, I was thinking about, um, I recently, um, my daughter's, at my daughter's 21st, I completely got the catering wrong. Because I supplied a, a bulk of, um, a re reasonable quantity I thought of craft beer and then some ordinary bottled beer and some wine. And it was really interesting that for that cohort, the craft beer disappeared w way quicker than I would have liked. <laughs> no one, not one bottle of the conventional brewery brew was touched. And the entire group then switched to wine. And I'm old enough to remember when, um, um, at, th at their age, uh, kind of, we drank DB or Lion Brown in quart bottles. And then when we got really cool, we switched to green stubbies. Um, kind of, our parents drank this revolting flagon beer, which was really uncool. And of course now, <laughs> jiggers are cool. Flagons are out, but jiggers are really cool, right? So it's a complete change. So And, and homebrew was kind of, beneath flag and beer is something beneath contempt, right? So it's been a huge change and it's been a particular change in Wellington. I was at a bar recently in Auckland and I for craft beer and the waitress looked at me like I was asking for, you know, sort of Mon Mongolian yak juice. Um, so that raises the question what craft beer is. Is there a beer aficionado who can answer the question what craft beer is? It's kind of clear what it's not. Um, something like 90% of the beers that were drunk in the world are based from lager. And craft beer, when it uh, got going, was all about ale. So 90% of craft beers are ales, but there are craft beer lagers. Is there any beer aficionado? Does anyone know what a craft beer is? I just drink it and ask for it, but you don't know what it is. So there, there's um, three completely unsatisfactory definitions. I mean, one is small boutique independent brewery. Well, that's clearly written by the Boutique Independent Brewery Association. Um, the pioneer in New Zealand for craft beer was Max. Does anyone know who owns Max? Lion. And who owns Lion? Kerry. So in what sense is, you know, Max, which makes great craft beer by my taste. So it fails the first one. Um, it's made in a small brewery, possibly. Um, so I think, you know, what people mean by craft beer is any, so, some people mean there's anything not made by a macro brewery, or alternatively any beer that I like. <laughs> so um, if some of you have a huge capacity, you can do a craft beer trail. They don't call it a pub crawl because that would be politically incorrect in an age of, of, of um, safe and secure drinking and all that. So. Um, you could do a craft beer trail if you had a massive capacity. How many craft beer bars do you think there are? This is where you can contribute. So I gave you some numbers to choose from. 13, 17, 23 or 27 craft beer bars if you were to... This is just Wellington City alone. I'm, I'm ignoring... 23. So, 23? 23? 23? Someone must have done it. So there are 23 bars in Wellington City alone. And quite a few of those serve only craft beer. You will not find a Heineken, or dare I say it, a Foster's um, anywhere. So this is the Wellington region. How many craft breweries are there in the Wellington region? But harder, same numbers? Okay, so table by table, 17 over here. 17, 17, amazing. 27. Oh, where's 27? Well done, every other table can play. There are 27 breweries in the Wellington region, so it's huge. I mean, to give you a sense of the, the, the size of the change, when I lived in the US, I think the number of breweries had fallen to 89, which was the lowest number ever recorded since they captured systematic statistics on it. Now. I think one in three Americans live within 10 miles of a craft brewery. 
So I refused to drink any American beer when I was there. I simply drank, because most of it was low alcohol, rubbishy lager for a lowest common denominator taste. Now, if anyone's been to a bar in the United States, the, the range is amazing. And the Americans have something called American Pale Ale, which they got for something called Indian Pale Ale. So there are four propositions here that may well be myths. Uh, and I did a craft, uh, a beer tasting recently, and they told me all these stories. And I did a little bit of research, and some of it turns out some of them might be myths. So the first was that craft beer was invented by a brewer called George Hodgson from Bow in East London. And of course, he had the great advantage that he was near the East India Company's docks. And so they started sourcing their supplies from him. And he made a lot of money out of about, about Indian pale ale. So that's proposition one. Is that true? Proposition two. It started as an export to troops in India for the East, India, East Indian Company back in the 1880s, 1800s, sorry. Uh, three, the British only discovered it by accident. There was a few shipwrecks. Uh, the, 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 the cargo got salvaged. People acquired a taste for it, and it became more mainstream. So that's number four. And number three was the brewers added an extra hops and alcohol because of the distance it had to be shipped. So table by table, which, if any of those, are myths? Where was that? Number three? Four. Number four? Number one. Number one. Four. One and four? Any other tables? So, you'd be pleased to know they're all myths. Um, it was made by brewers before George Hodgson. He just was one of these people that's successful in commercialising it. By the way, his window was very short. Um, they found that the water was better in Trent, and within 30 years, um, the, the locus of brewing had shifted. Um, actually, it wasn't the troops. Troops drank, drank porter. It was the elite that drank pale ale, which is why it gets a certain cachet. So it wasn't for the troops at all. Um, the notion that you added hops and alcohol, uh, you don't add alcohol, you don't need to add alcohol for beer. Uh, and uh, they hadn't discovered it, they'd, they'd been doing it for a long time. And the, the, the shipwreck thing is a complete myth. Um, People have been drinking pale ale from well before India. The uh, British got control of significant bits of India. So, there's a thing called on, on Adelaide Road called the Occasional Brewer, and it's actually developed by a policy manager friend of mine. Um, and he was working for customs. Oh, I've blown this, actually. I've blown it with a story. So he just was working in customs. And he was working on the, cust and he was working on the Customs and Excise Act, and he discovered an interesting provision which, because which, there's an exemption for home brew for, from excise. And he, worked, he looked at the detail of the Customs Act, and a couple of sections were written, written differently, and anyone with a parliamentary background would know if Parliament writes two clauses on the same thing using slightly different words, they clearly have a different intent. And the intent that he deduced from Parliament's decision was that if he was to be in the business of supplying the equipment but not making, then it would be the equivalent of home brew. And so the entire business model is exploiting the absence of one word in the Customs Act, whereby they supply the equipment right down to the recipe and expert advice, but they don't touch the making of the beer. And as long as they don't touch the making of the beer, then it is, they're simply in the business of equipment supply, which attack, attracts GST, but doesn't attract the excise that goes on alcohol. So if you want to find out more about the occasional brewer, talk to Jeff, and we're going to have fun time. <laughs>